Hello guys, and welcome to the Penny Podcast, Valentine's Day Special. I'm Andres Bear, I'm in 12th grade, and I am the Capo Student Media Web Producer. And I'm Yasha Vula, I'm in 12th grade, and I'm a staff writer. If this is your first time tuning in, the Penny Podcast is a weekly podcast that incorporates entertainment and interview elements. Now, let's start this off by giving our opinions on this special day. What do you think about Valentine's Day, Yash? Well, for me, I, I'm single, so I don't do Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. But I think Valentine's Day can be celebrated by like family and everyone because it's a holiday of love, you know? Mm-hmm. And I love my family, so I feel like doing something special for the family also counts. Mm-hmm. But like some people like argue because, you know, like history and stuff. But yeah, for me, it's like I can do it with my family and just have fun time, you know? Yeah, I think it's also a very fun holiday that doesn't have to be necessarily just between a couple. Yeah, or a yeah, that just yeah. Mm-hmm. No, and today at school they had Stuco make cards for everybody. Yeah, and it was like a little heart had their name on it, had mm-hmm. a little fun saying. So I think that that just shows that it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, you have to have a girlfriend. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you that. No, it it just yeah, it's just showing our thankfulness. I know there's Thanksgiving for that, but then this shows like. I really, really like you, and you know, just live your best life, and you know, mm-hmm. just showing our good vibes for them, sharing our good vibes with them. Yeah, that I feel like that's um, Valentine's Day for. It needs to be Valentine's Day for people, not just couples. Yeah, and the appreciation of yeah. one another. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say, even the iconography of Valentine's Day with the hearts, mm-hmm. like, I mean, Halloween has the the pumpkins, pumpkins, and it has the witches and whatnot. And Christmas has the Christmas tree. I just, I like the idea of the hearts being like the main focus of Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, I think it just overall just gives us a, like a really happy vibe. It's just mm-hmm. warm and fuzzy. I feel like Valentine's Day is like, you know, what's, I forget the word, but like it just has to give me a feeling of like warm and fuzzy and like, con- like bundled up in blankets and like surrounded by love. <laughs> even though yeah. I like never experienced that physically, but like I, that's what I feel. Yeah, I agree. And even, I know online, some artists release stuff that's kind of like Valentine's Day yeah. centered, like a special song or something. Mm-hmm. Or even, I know, uh, restaurants have like Valentine's Day specific Spec- menus. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just awesome. Yeah. But then that's that's probably for like couples. It's like two portion meals so that mm-hmm. they can like share off one plate. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, was the lady and the tramp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the spaghetti, the spaghetti right? scene, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking about that, and kind of, I guess, the more capitalist, money-spending side of mm-hmm. Valentine's Day, Neha Desaraju wrote an article for the Psychic titled, Stop Buying Gifts for Valentine's Day, published under our opinion section. So I'll recite the opening to her article. 66 million hungry children around the world could be fed for six years with the amount of money... Oh, with the amount of money spent for Valentine's Day. To read the rest of Desiraj's piece, head over to kapostudentmedia.com. What do you think about that, Yash? They're not wrong. Um, ex- looking at the history, um, Valentine's Day has been um, c- centered. Like the, the reason it actually started was because people were like, okay, so we need a day to celebrate it, and like, just giving out flowers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and I feel like that's true. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. especially like roses and chocolates. I feel like they have the highest sale on Valentine's mm-hmm. Day. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's think of some businesses that would greatly. So I know for sure one eight hundred flowers because mm. that's just mainly centered on flowers. Maybe yeah. Places like Callaways, even like the you know the conversation chalk candy oh, things. Yeah. <laughs> Those d- disgusting tasting <laughs> ones. <laughs> I don't like them, I, but I mean. Don't they have the little... It's not even a heart, right? It, it has, like, a saying on it as well. Yeah, it's like, hi, how are you? Kind oh. of. It's a con- it's, they're, they're called conversation candies, so mm-hmm. it's just simple, like, cute-looking ones which yeah. don't really necessarily taste good, yeah. but then they, like, really profit off of it. Yeah, why not just give someone a flower? Something that'll die. <laughs> you don't have to make, <laughs> like, all these plastic and, I know. and whatnot. I feel like just being there for someone is, like greatest thing you could give someone rather than like materialistic ones Mm -hmm. even though like I appreciate a materialistic one if someone like gives me like I don't know a box of chocolates on Valentine's Day like my heart will melt Mm -hmm. but like you don't have to do that if you you know Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah 
And I feel like that culture has shifted as well for other holidays. I know a lot of people in Christmas, they don't necessarily give big gifts anymore. They like to take the people out somewhere. They like to buy gift cards where you could go spend your own uh, holiday the way you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I guess you could apply that to Valentine's Day. Maybe. We just haven't gotten to that point. So yeah. I think so. Nope, I think people still have like, the connotation of that. Um, Valentine's Day is supposed to be really romantic and everyone needs to like go out with their you know like their special someone and like celebrate it like big mm-hmm. style and grand style but it really doesn't have to be that way yeah and that's my opinion on it yeah so let's talk about some valentine's day facts now yeah so the first one is some traces of valentine's day were found in the pagan fertility festival dated back to the 16th century bc they were whipping women and sacrificing animals. They really thought that whip, <laughs> whipping... Ugh, sorry. sorry um, they really thought that whipping women would, you know, make them give birth. Which what? totally like, does not make sense. But that's what they used to think. And that's why it used to be a pagan festival. Paganism is like witchcraft and stuff. Uh-huh. And like, and after that, um, Christianity took over and... They put like say on Saint Valentine's, yeah, and he took over, and but it became a thing for love. Even sacrificing animals. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. It's just God give me main male child kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's very forceful. It's a very forceful Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah it was a festival. Asking. It was not a love thing. It was yeah. not a, an option. It was like it's like Christmas. You have to do it. Like, you know? Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get a baby or whatnot. That's interesting. Now. To the second fact, Josh. Okay. Every year, you can write a letter addressed to Rome- Juliet from Romeo and Juliet, and the Juliet Club Award presents the Dear Juliet uh, Prize to the author of the best romantic letter. Mm. Now, what constitutes a romantic letter, you would say? Something that's heartfelt. Heartfelt? Realistic? Or imaginary? Those are two different things. Those are really two different things. Okay, that's that, that's something we need to like debunk because uh, unrealistic things, literally all rom coms. Mm. Am I wrong? Do you think mm, I'm wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. Okay, so if you're basing off of rom coms you're watching, mm-hmm. then I feel like it's unrealistic. People don't just run into people. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They can, but still, yeah, it it's like unlikely. Yeah. Um. Imagine it. I mean, I'd like to say that if you send someone a text that's very romantic, it could be more realistic. While if you send someone a letter, it would be more imaginative. That's just the way I see it, though. Like you pour, really? yeah, you pour more of your heart out. Into I mean, something you can physical. still write a letter uh, and base it like base it off of how you feel because I feel like that's more personal and physical, mm-hmm. and like you're physically writing it down. So like the person who who's like gets the letter is like. Oh, you have your like your touch to it, you know, oh, because see. it's their handwriting. Yeah, I feel like that's how I feel. Like back, like it's, it's like saying back in the olden times, it's like better. Yeah, and I know? think most people would agree that yeah, physical letters, especially on Valentine's, are like yeah, key, like, they're really like, good. Yeah, and that doesn't have to do with like capitalism or anything. It's just you. It's not buying um, cards from from I don't know uh, Hallmark. Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not like buying cards from Hallmark. It's just you like sitting down with a pen and. a Paper and like just harding or write and like writing your heart out. Yeah, yeah. But hey, if you want to buy cards from Hallmark, you could take the easy route. Like, oh, you, oh, you do you. Oh man. yeah, oh yeah. That's just this is just our opinion on yeah. it. <laughs> Honestly. So the third fact is giving a box of chocolates on Valentine's Day became a tradition in the early 19th century, and yes, that's because of capitalism. Early 19th century. Ah, it's that a long was time ago. Like the 1800s. 1800s. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like that's people were really showing their yeah. special someone, like how, their appreciation to them. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking that Valentine's Day became something big after post war, post World War One and post World War Two, like the baby boomer. Yeah, baby boomer generation. Everybody's loving. Everybody's having fun. I, I mean, don't know. I feel like that could be where like the actual boom like the blast of how people like see today happen but like i feel like it existed from before right yeah hopefully 
one day we'll actually be able to like pinpoint the first Valentine's Day card ever sent. Oh, oh my god. That that'd be, that'd would be, be so, so good. cool. So Yash, what is the fourth fact? The chalky conversation candies people buy on Valentine's Day mm-hmm. was originally intended for medicinal purposes before the company started making them into candies. <laughs> How's that? Like oh. I just I found this fact and it was true, but I just it d- what? What? something about it is just like how did Men's? you think of that? I mean, could they mints? Alto they have the same consistency as like the the big Altoid mints. Yeah. And I know those were like uh, semi medical, you know, medicinal. Um, um, I feel like okay, so here's my theory on that. Um, I feel like the conversation candies they were meant to do medicinal. And then they were like sweet also, because <laughs> babies don't like medicines and oh. anything with sweet is like can, they can ingest. Yeah. But, but you know, without throwing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were like, okay, kids like this, why don't you just take the medicine out and put the sugar in? Yo, yeah, and put the the little. Yeah, that notes came on. way after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but that came way after. That is interesting. Yeah. And I feel like that's the theory on that. There's, um, they didn't write. How did that even happen yeah. on it? That's something you can't you can't really pinpoint that. I mean, yeah, you'd really have to try. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what other candies and chocolates are also big on Valentine's Day? I'd like to say that the the box of chocolates, yeah. like the heart shaped box. Yeah, that's right. um, Hers- no Hershey's. Uh, Hershey's are, are big on Valentine's Day. I feel yeah. like Hershey's. The actual bars, right? Not the bars. They make like heart shaped candy, uh, heart shaped oh, chocolates. Really? Yeah. Oh, I they're big on. Valentine's Day. I feel like mm-hmm. that's it. Um, Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Yeah, I've seen people give out Kit Kat. Chocolates, right? Chocolate is just romantic. Yeah. yeah, and even like jelly beans. They have like Valentine's Day yeah. jelly beans. Yeah. Popcorn as well. Mm-hmm. Like popcorn. Do you think sugar has to do with the fact that it produces a serotonin that makes us happy and like you know lovey dovey wow. and stuff? Wow, on Valentine's Day, right? Oh yeah. wow. And that, oh lord, <laughs> that's interesting. That could be it because there's so many, uh, uh, there's so many ch- candies that go Just out. Passing around, it's almost like Halloween. Y- yeah, I got like three candies today, and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. But yeah, imagine that. That would be interesting. I feel like that's definitely it. Mm-hmm. Why do you think people eat candy or, or like ice cream or something sweet when they break up? Oh, yeah, because they want to get their mood up. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Who knows, really? Who knows? (laughs) So the next fact is Cupid is a Greek god. In ancient Greece, he was called Eros, the son of Aphrodite. I did not know that at all. Yeah, Cupid is a chubby, like, really small baby with, like, the arrow. The arrow, arrow bow, yeah. But he was a... I I thought he was just some little dude in some... Uh, Renaissance paintings. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely one of it. I feel like they this this looked at Eros and was like, okay, the, how do we make him cuter? <laughs> yeah, like I was like, what? But his purpose is to make people fall in love, right? Yeah, and Aphrod- Aphrodite is is the most beautiful god out there. Mm-hmm. She's the god of the like, beauties, right? Yeah. Aphrodite. Yeah. Oh, I said Aphrodite. <laughs> Aphro- I think it's Aphrodite. It's fine. Aphrodite. Hey, either way. You know, we're not Greek. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we, Greek. We don't live in, what, what was this, like, the, the zeros? Um, <laughs> before Jesus was born. Before Jesus, before everybody. That's insane. So they were thinking of stuff like that. They were trying to make uh, stories based around romance. Yeah, people always were into romance from the beginning of time. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's probably the most classic, like, thematic thing. In any book, in any right, piece of yeah, whatever, yeah, because love can be um, shown in like many different ways. Mm-hmm. People can love isn't just the physical connection; it's just like mental. Like if you like think of someone, it's just you know. Yeah. And I feel like many writers like like even though their story ha- stories may have like different thematic um, meaning to it, mm-hmm. I feel like it just comes down to like romance and love and yeah. love for a friend or love for a dog, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So what's the next fact, Yash? Americans spent over one one forty five million dollars on Valentine's Day letters. That is a lot. 
Hallmark is really yeah out there. They say they the ever the ever <laughs> elusive <laughs> they mm-hmm. say that Hallmark is a monopoly. Who else do you know? Which other card companies exist? One, I think there's one called Papyrus. That's it. It's Hallmark. I tell you, it's a monopoly. We should not be worried about <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> it's, Walmart it's, is, I mean, Walmart, Hallmark, Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> sorry. Hallmark is taking over the card company, and that's, that's, yes, that's it. <laughs> it's insane. They have their own TV channels. They yeah. even have a streaming service, my man. I know. That is insane. Um, Hallmark is literally based on romance because even their TV channel is like yeah. uh, sappy rom coms. Uh huh. Yeah. That is interesting. Their entire industry is based, it's based on, on Valentine's Day, like Valentine's wow. Day twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, they must get their money. I mean, maybe the, the a holiday or two in between, right? A mm-hmm. birthday or two, but yeah, Valentine's Day must be like. Their if you go thing. to Kroger right now, I bet you you're gonna find like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I went there and they was like bombarded with red stuff. And it was <laughs> too much for my eyes. You're like, ah. <laughs> Valentine's Day. So now let's talk about the best romance movies. Let's just go down this list. And if you want to say something about these movies, we can say something. The first one is The Notebook, which came out in 2004. I'd say a modern classic. It, it can be considered. I ne- don't necessarily like love it because mm-hmm. I feel like Noah the guy was really toxic <laughs> uh, <laughs> he literally was like I'm gonna kill myself if you don't love me so mm-hmm. a little toxic but you know what it's romance anyway yeah. and it became really popular mm-hmm. fun fact the director of the notebook did not uh, casted um, what's his face what's the guy's name Ryan Gosling Ryan Gosling yeah. because he was unattractive Wow. Yeah, because he thought he was unattractive and it'd be more realistic uh-huh. that um, he'd play the male role. M- male role. That is crazy. Well, the next one is A Star is Born, which came out in 2018. Oh, I, I think it's good. Yeah, it's got good songs and Lady yeah. Gaga is pretty good Lady in Gaga. that. Good performances, good. good music. Yeah, and that's all I can say about it because I did not really watch it. Well, most of these are like in between. We watched them and we didn't, but yeah. they're like cultural, like landmarks that yeah, we yeah, just yeah. know about them. No, yeah, because the songs in A Star Is Born is re- are Big, really good. Yeah. yeah. So the next one is Crazy Rich Asians, which came out in 2018. I like watched it, but I didn't watch it because it ca- caught my attention at first. Because I was like, "Whoa, Asia's so cool!" Then in the middle, I was like, "I don't even know what's going on." <laughs> I really like Crazy Rich Asians. Really. I loved it so much. I'm reading the books right now. It just it catches the culture like really well. Mm-hmm. It's really culturally um, appropriate. Yes. Um, they don't like they didn't whitewash Probably anything. Whitewash. Uh, no white people because there is no white people in the yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like I know they had problems with Ghost in the Show, which was like a like an anime adaptation, which had Scarlett. Uh, I don't know how to say her last name correctly. Johansson. Yeah, Johansson, right? <laughs> Um, they had her as a lead role, which yeah. doesn't make sense. Which no, yeah. The the best thing about this movie was the fact that everyone were actually Asian and like yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that that was just amazing for me. Representation, representation, right? so yeah. Especially now, the twenty twenty already, like people still like are not ready for that. Yeah, I'm stupid. Think so either, yeah. Next one is La La Land. Oh, I think it's in my top three movies of all time. Really? I absolutely love. La La Land. So good. La La Land is good. I like the songs. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm a musical theater type of person, so I only (laughs) listen to the songs. I don't really (laughs) watch the movie. But I know what happens, and I think it's a good movie. Oh, yeah. Um, It won her Best Actress Award, uh, like the Academy Best Actress, so so it must be really good. Yeah, and it's one of the few movies that have made me cry. Really? Yeah, it was that sad. I was you like, were a no. sappy person. I did oh, yes. not know that. I cried during that one, and I cried during Coco. You dr- cried during Coco? Yes, I when cried. She, when he was remember- she was remembering her yeah. daddy. Oh, uh-huh. that's so cute. And what other movie? Probably like <laughs> a Star Wars movie. Because oh <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want it to end. I don't want it to end. But No, I don't cry watching movies, so, so I can't relate to that. But La La Land is a good movie. Yeah. Amazing. 
Next but if you're not into musicals, I don't think you should watch it. Yeah, it might. Mm, it might take you off, but like still, it still watch it. <laughs> Just yeah, cause. for for real, yeah. The next one is Grease. So it's classic material. Came mm-hmm. out in 1978. It's you can't say anything about it. It's a classic. It, it's it is classic. Um, there's obviously controversy about the fact that she like changed her whole appearance, but still, it's like a classic and. If mm-hmm. you don't watch it, like, what are you doing with your life kind of thing? Yeah. Even though they're, like, a bunch of prob... It's problematic, but still, you just, just yeah. watch it. Just watch it for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, and back then, I guess it wasn't problematic, right? <laughs> I was mm-hmm. You never know. Yeah. But the next one is Titanic, which I would say, 1997, is also a classic. I'd say edging on classic and modern classic, but still, like, wow. It's really good. I like, I like everything about Titanic. The set... The, sh- the costumes, mm-hmm. the acting, like everyone was so good in that. And it's really painful to watch um, Jack die. Yeah. She Spoil- should have let him on. Spoilers. Yeah, she should have <laughs> let him on the door. She's stupid. And he died by sinking, right? Because he, he froze didn't. to death. He froze to Because they didn't have enough space on their thing? Did not have, quote unquote. <laughs> no, she did. There's literally so much space. That's funny. The next one is Beauty and the Beast, which came out in 1991. So now we're getting into some cartoon territory, animated territory. I love that movie. Beauty and the Beast is by far my favorite Disney movie. Yes, so, it's good. Yeah, the new one and the old one mm-hmm. are so good. I and love- that's pure romance. It's pure romance. People argue, of course, it's Disney. People are like, beast reality, but Mm-mm. it's, it is, but, but like, just, it's about sh- seeing with your eyes. It's not what people think, what yeah. love is. It's just you and the other person and what you see between you two. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, just. I think it's, that one, once I keep throwing around this word. Classic, 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 classic. <laughs> but that's just, it's just what it is. You can't say anything about it. You can't read. Some no. movies you can kind of like, okay. Yeah, like The Little Mermaid, I'm like, mm, it's, yeah. it's a classic, mm. but still. And even like, like no. also, some of the themes in that movie don't necessarily stand up to today. No, she's 16 <laughs> and she went up to shore to get a man. Like, no. <laughs> uh, so thank you all for joining us in the 39th episode of the Penny Podcast, which, of course, was a Valentine's Day special. Links to the material we mentioned today, a.k.a. Neha's article, can be found below. See y'all next week.